my example, how long have you been repping for? Hello there. Uh, straight in at the deep end. Uh, I've been rapping since I was about 11 and uh, I was 26 last week. So, okay. thanks. About 15 years. Yeah, yeah, for a long time. I started off just doing it in the playground because I was rubbish at football. <laughs> and so the only other way I could fit in was to be good at rapping. You see, like most of your tracks, you've like sampled really good songs. Yeah. yeah. Like, how do you know? How do you like choose them? Your sampling's fine, but be prepared. You're gonna have to give up your publishing rights, which are your actual writers' rights. When you get a record deal, it's always split into two parts. You get your artist royalties, obviously for like your singing and your recording, and then you get your publishing royalties for actually writing. And on my first album, we sampled. Uh, some Ukrainian opera and some Bollywood soundtracks, but uh, so many roads just got the Carpenters sampled that loop, stuck it in a chorus. Even after we replayed the chords and resung it, uh, cost uh, cost us a couple of grand to clear it, and then we had to give 100% of our publishing away. So even though I wrote three 16-bar verses either side of the chorus, if that song gets used, say on an advert, I get no money. If you want to look at the best way to make money on the road or on the streets, look at what the top grime MCs are doing because they are the best businessmen in the country. Like when it comes to you know indie bands can do the big festivals and that sort of thing, but when it comes to selling mixtapes on the street, look at the grime MCs. Look at people like Jamie and Skepta because they're selling them by the thousands as they are with T-shirts. I think it's important to have it make it a really nice product. You know, a lot of people don't put enough care into the artwork. You want a really catchy bit of art, and uh, you know, I'd like a luminous green and black one for my first mixtape that that the heartbeat sample was on. You just want something that's eye catching and maybe a play on a famous like poster or slogan or something like that, you know what I mean? And you know, if you can't get them into the shops, just set up your own eBay account and link it through your MySpace, you know? A lot of people are selling t shirts through, my, uh, through, through their MySpace, which links to their own eBay account, and they post it from their house. You know, so as long as you, you get your cousin or your sister or someone to do it. Self-promotion, you have to, everywhere you go, you have to tell everyone you meet about you and tell them you're the best thing since sliced bread. And you have to rap and sing in front of them and you have to be forceful and give them CDs. And you know what, if people don't listen and they don't play you on Radio 1, you have to go out there and do it yourself. If people don't offer you a record deal, you have to go out there and do it yourself. I was in a situation three years ago where no one, we were looking for a record deal, but no one was interested. So we released the single ourselves on 7 inch, pressed up 300 copies, really nice artwork. Get a radio plugger who like, if they're into you, they don't mind plugging you for free because they can be quite expensive, radio pluggers. And then we got our tune played on Pete Tong and Zane Lowe in one week. A week later, we had three major record labels calling up my manager going, who's this example we're on Pete Tong and Zane Lowe? Where's he come from? And they were the same people six months before, didn't want to know. Have a great logo, a classic looking logo that says, and, and have a great t-shirt. T-shirts are the most important thing. But you have to have an amazing live show, because that's where the bands make their money, and you have to have an amazing t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just make it easy for the crowd. I just say, right, this is the bouncing song, so you're gonna bounce. <laughs> I might stick a few swear words in there, just to, you know, make them sure that they, they definitely know it's the bouncing song. And then when there's the hands in the air song, I tell them, I'm like, yeah, this is the hands in the air song. Okay. When do you see your hands in the air? <laughs> Right, say a certain line in your song, which you know is going to be really catchy or it's really repetitive. Yeah. You say, I've got four words you need to learn. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's just little things like that. And like, so even though they haven't heard the song before, they can, like, when it comes to your first chorus, everyone, everyone can sing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, they'll, and, they'll, and they'll remember you as well. Yeah. And say your name after every two or three songs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah.